Greetings, everybody. Last Outrider here with another hybrid, what I think, video. This time it's going to be Hammer and Bolter and live action Cowboy Bebop. Because these two ideas are related in my reality. Hammer and Bolter has come under a lot of criticism. In my last video, I said it didn't really bother me too much. I watched it, and for me, it's fine. And I was forced, I was tortured to watch some of the reaction videos that people made about Hammer and Bolter, and the only thing I can say about them is get a life. You whiny little neckbeard loser. Yeah. Okay. And and I'm saying that as somebody who is more of an expert on 40K than you will ever be in your wildest imaginations. So, to sum up, the criticisms that I've heard of Hammer and Bolter boil down to this. They want to see army list, cheesy 40K army lists animated. And if, if the fighting in the animation is not as cheesy as it is in some neckbeards, hyper-competitive, spreadsheet-created army list, then it's not good right so oh my god the striking scorpions you know that could just never cut through that hit that what they what they needed to be there is a small group of fire pikes you know on fire dragons shooting at them then 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 that would be uh okay okay uh um yeah all i could just say is the the, the fuck you people I'm sorry, just fuck you people. 30, 30 years of waiting to see some type of 40K animation. And what I have is people saying, I want to see Game Cheese animated. They should all only be armed with plasma weapons. They should all only be armed with power fists because that's the only thing that would be able to do that type of damage to uh to an star day in in there and and everything and it's like holy shit basically you want to see the worst aspects of the game animated and it, 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 instead of getting a warhammer 40k story and, and you expect <coughs> an editor at GW to be looking at this animation and go, nope, that's not cheesy enough. Send it back to the writers and the animators. We need more cheese. I'm sad. I'm sad for you people. I just feel sad for you people. Cheese is not a virtue in Warhammer 40k. It's it's a scourge. It's a vice. It's a disadvantage. It's people that put number crunching over narrative. Number crunching over trying to play a fun game. And I hate those people. So seeing at the outrage that these people are not represented in the animation i laugh at you i laugh at you and i revel in your torment <laughs> i'm sorry okay that was the chaos part of me all right now to go to the flip side of this cowboy bebop The criticisms of this have merit. Cowboy Bebop was obviously made by people 
written by people who don't know what anime is. And the criticism of people who make live action anime is that they treat it like a joke. Instead of the a, a formatted, highly formatted art form. So I understand. Cowboy Bebop was a was grim dark, more grim dark than 40k is today. To be honest with you, one of the the appeals of Cowboy Bebop was the desperation of their situation, the times that they would be in their ships going days without food, um, and literally starving. Trying to, uh, waiting to, to, to wait, make the, the money from, from bounties. I didn't get any sense of that in season one. Which means that the people making this didn't get any sense of that from the animation. They just, they just saw it as a comic. They didn't feel that. It, and part of this is going to be because they're probably not Japanese and they don't understand Japanese culture and they don't understand that the characters in Cowboy Bebop approached those types of trials and situations the way Japanese culture would approach it. And they wanted to and they therefore they didn't really understand the desperation of their situation. And therefore they didn't put it into the storylines. And that's sad, but it's also a learning process. So they basically approached it the way Zack Snyder approached Watchmen, right? Take the story panels and bring them to life. But Zack Snyder also worked very hard on bringing the, the story itself to life, and that wasn't done there. there it just... But they acknowledged this. To their credit, they acknowledged this and they said season two is going to treat this as a serious story. These are going to be treated as though it were, you know, a CSI episode instead of a comic book. A kind of tongue-in-cheek, you know, sarcastic kind of comedy when none of that is implied in Cowboy Bebop the, 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 the animation the anime um, this now this is going to be for some of the hardcore anime people out there Blood the Last Vampire uh, is, a, is an example of how strict the rules in animation are. The characters in many ways are treated, if you want a western analogy, it's like um, the highly formulaic, formulaic ancient Greek theater. Ancient Greek theater had basically set archetypal characters which you can't play with. Their personalities, their actions, what they do, how they respond, are all set in stone. The only thing you can change around is the scene, the situations that they're in. So you're taking set characters, fixed characters, and putting them in different situations just to see how they would react. This is very similar to anime. They are set fixed personality types and characters and backgrounds uh, for these types of characters and all you can do is select the different types of characters and place them in different novel situations to see how would this personality type respond in this interesting and strange and different situation. This was not respected at all in Cowboy Bebop the live action. It was not respected in Ghost in the Shell. If you want an example of this, watch Alice in Borderland. 
which was made by Japanese people who know what anime were, and they took the characters and they put those personalities into live action actors who also understood that and acted them out. And sometimes it seems a little too, uh, um, it seems a little strange to view from a from a western standpoint but from an anime standpoint you understand that this is this personality type and this is how this personality type would react in that situation it's not going to break that role the one example where you had an a, an anime writer and director break this was Blood the Last Vampire, and his animation studio was almost shut down in Japan. And he had to move to California to finish the um the 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 show because the the, the Japanese anime writers, the animators, they they just, they just would not work on this. His character design, the responses, the way they drew the face on who was supposed to be the protagonist and the hero simply did not conform to the rules of animation and they refused to draw it. So he couldn't complete this, his, his work in Japan and had to finish it in California. I remember the controversy around that, but if anybody watched that anime, they would say, what's the big deal about this? Well, they put the wrinkles in her forehead when she was fighting. That form of drawing can only be placed on a bad guy because that's the rule of animation. You can't put that on her. Why? Because that's the rule of anime. I understand these rules, and I hope next season the writers and directors will gain an appreciation and a respect for anime if they want to bring this to the screen and have the characters fit their role. Respect that this isn't supposed to be some lighthearted comedy. It's not just... It's not a joke. Cowboy Bebop is not a joke. It's, it's not a Deadpool. And if they want to get past season two, they had best understand that. Otherwise, I will join the critics. So you get one season of Making a Mistakes, uh, cultural you know, uh, appropriation. And after that, you either fix it or just stop. So that's why I looked at these two things, Hammer and Bolter and Cowboy Bebop, to be on the two opposite sides, okay? Hammer and Bolter captured what 40K is supposed to be. It's supposed to be an RPG. It's supposed to be a story. It's not supposed to be number crunching neckbeards trying to win at all costs. Okay? And that's good that that's not brought to the animation. And on the other side, Cowboy Bebop completely lost the concept, did everything to bring the story sets and, and a, a storyboard alive, but had little to no concept about who the characters were and how they were feeling and how Japanese culture deals with adversity versus U.S. culture and how they represent that. They don't go out of their way to bemoan a situation. It's it, Yeah, you're not going to see a depressed, down spike whining that there's no, that he hasn't eaten for two days. That's... N and so because they didn't see that in the comic, it means that it must be a lighthearted situation. And they didn't understand that. So I hope they do now. Maybe they will bring in a Japanese cultural coach to help them write season two. So 
That is my feedback on these two things and how they're connected, and I hope you enjoy. Until next time, bye. <laughs>